Hello ladies and gentlemen, Slidesa here, and today I'm talking to Daniel Fedder, the creator of Neo Scavenger. Hello Daniel, how are you? Hey Jesse, I'm doing pretty good, how about you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. So, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself before we get into the game? Okay, um, so I, uh, I think probably the most recent um, thing that I've uh, done was working at BioWare and BioWare uh, EA uh, after the buyout. Um, so I was working on uh, Dragon Age Origins, a little bit of Dragon Age 2, um, and the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer um, before I decided I wanted to kind of do uh, some of my own games. So I uh, left the company and uh, have been basically making Neo Scavenger on my savings account since then. Um, before that, I was uh, mostly in uh, web development after university, and I studied physics at university. So, kind of a, a random meandering history. Uh, fair enough. And uh, what's the company called that you've uh, started up? Uh, I call it Blue Bottle Games, um, and the name is actually partially defined by what was left available to me when I was shopping around for uh, business names and websites. Um, but I partially chose it uh, just because it was it's an easy to say uh, title. It, it doesn't get confused. I guess my rule of thumb whenever I'm trying to come up with a name for a business or um, other product is could I tell somebody the name at a loud bar and would they understand what I said? Um, so Blue Bottle Games is pretty easy to say. Um, it also has kind of a, I guess, mana potion um, theme to it, which I think a lot of role-playing gamers will will understand. And uh, there was also kind of a, I guess there were a lot of game companies that I really thought were iconic and memorable, like Black Isle Studios and Looking Glass and Ion Storm. Um, and something about all those names was, uh, I thought, both memorable, memorable and inspiring. It had kind of a creative flair to it, so I tried to model it after a lot of those. Yeah, well, when I first saw it, I thought of a mana bottle. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, here in Australia, we got, uh, we got, what do you call them? We got blue bottles as a, they're water, water, uh... Or jellyfish, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> As you were just saying it then, I just remembered. I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. All right, so you're working on a game called Neo Scavenger. So what's Neo Scavenger about? Uh, well, Neo Scavenger is primarily a, um, a turn-based survival game uh, set in a post-apocalyptic world, Earth, um, except uh, it... The world has kind of um, developed uh, paranormal activity or supernatural activity in, uh, in conjunction with high technology. So um, in the world you'll find things like uh, the dogmen are, are one of the first things you'll encounter in the game, which is kind of a, a monstrous bipedal dog. Um, but there's also gigantic cities, there's um, uh, cryo... Um, cryo facilities for, uh, what do you call it, stasis, sleeping, um, but then the majority of the world, or at least the place where the character starts, has been wracked by war and famine and, uh, and these supernatural phenomenon, um, and has left the character struggling to piece together uh, the items and the resources he needs to stay alive. Um, and to make matters worse, he doesn't know who he is or where he came from. Uh, he woke up from cryostasis without any memory of who he is. So on top of trying to figure out how to survive, he has to figure out where he came from and what the story is and what happened to the world that he used to, well, presumably used to live in. Well, that's very interesting. So... I found Neo Scavenger when I was looking for different types of survival games, and it takes the player into a new type of survival experience from the recent DayZ and WarZ games. So, what made you decide to make a survival game like you have? Uh, well, I think um, zombies weren't really at the forefront of my mind, so I think that's um, 
that's one of the differentiators between Neo Scavenger and a lot of the uh, survival style games that are out right now. Um, I like zombie uh, games and zombie films as much as as most other players. I just, uh, for whatever reason, that wasn't a primary element for me. Um, the things that I did find interesting were uh, some of the really mundane tasks that uh, we take for granted um, are actually quite difficult uh, in an environment like uh, like Neo Scavengers. I, I think a lot of people have have called out similarities to the film or book uh, The Road. Um, and that actually, uh, I think that's an apt comparison, even though uh, I started on Neo Scavenger before I saw the film. Um, but that's that's sort of the, the feel that I'm trying to capture, is the, uh, uh, the man against uh, nature, the man against other man, um, and in this case, there's also some supernatural element uh, to compete against. Um, but there's also, uh, I guess, a bit of a history that I have with uh, pen and paper games like Rifts and Shadowrun and uh, even Car Wars, um, which they had some interesting ways of combining um, supernatural, high-tech, and post-apocalyptic settings, or elements in the same setting. Um, and I always thought that was an interesting, uh, an interesting mix because now there's the aspect of mundane survival in a post-apocalyptic environment, but you also have occasional spikes of, of technology to aid or hurt you. Uh, and similarly, the, the supernatural elements are, are almost like advanced, advanced tools, both for your uh, benefit and your demise. Um, and I think recently I've developed a, a late blooming appreciation for, um, uh, Lovecraftian horror, um, sort of the the less is more, describing describing things beyond our understanding and uh, relying on their mysterious nature to scare you more than than outright describing. Um, which maybe that's not even the case with all Lovecraftian horror, but that's that's my first impression of it, and I really liked how I felt after reading it. So I've been trying to to wrap a lot of the narrative in Neo Scavenger with that sort of flavor. Oh yes, yeah, so that does sound really interesting. And uh, it's good that uh, people are picking up these things, you know, they probably enjoy it too, so that's why they've picked up on these things, so it's a really plus for your game most of the time. So mm -hmm. what stage of development is the game up to, and uh, when are you planning to release it? Uh, well, it's... It's in beta, technically, um, although it's been in beta since March of last year, so we're, we're going on almost a, a year of, of development with the beta badge attached to it. Um, the game had actually been in development since uh, March 2011, or I guess April 2011. Um, so it's, it's about two years old by now. Um, and when I originally put it up for sale on the website, I knew it wasn't finished, but I actually thought it was pretty close. Um, I remember saying, you know, this is going to be a three-month gig. Um, but I think, unsurprisingly, probably for most developers out there to hear this, uh, every three months goes by, and I think, ah, oh, it probably needs another three months. Um, and enough of that passed by to put us where we are now, and I'll probably still tell you there's three months left, but whether or not that's the case, uh, I think, has yet to be determined. Um, the one thing that I can say is that I'm at a point now where nearly everything I consider to be necessary um, is in there, uh, with the remaining uh, element being finishing off the, the main storyline uh, plot elements. Um, but it can now play at multiple resolutions the build I'm uploading today will actually do that. Um, and just about all of the systems work as they were intended to work. So uh, at this point, anything else I add besides plot is is really more bonus material. And uh, it'll depend a lot on, um, I guess, sort of how the fans receive what's there now. Okay. So do you just keep on fighting that you want to keep on adding more and more things into the game, and is that why it's taking you so long? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I don't think any artist feels like they're ever done with a piece of work. Um, I know that's even the case with small elements of of the game, and and uh, like if I do a painting for the game, or if I do a, a game system design, or you know, just about anything, there's there's always something else I could do to noodle with it and and make it a little bit better. So it's it's a struggle to uh, to sort of slap my own wrist and say you know you really have to move on and you have other things to do. Um, the uh, the website actually has a a list of features that can be voted on, um, and that's partially there to to keep me in check when it comes to priorities. It it's a way for players to vote on which features they think are the most important, and um, that's one way for me to say you know. I could keep noodling with this one system, but if I look at that list, I can see that most people care about this other system, so I should probably give that some more attention now. Um, and that's that's worked pretty well so far. All right, well, is there anything else you want to add before you go? Um, I guess uh, I should probably mention that uh, the game is... It's available on uh, my website, which is bluebottlegames.com, but it's also available on Desura if, uh, if you're more inclined to use that service. Um, and if you're anxious to see it on Steam, uh, I've actually got a green light page for Neoscavenger as well, which is doing pretty well. It's, it's actually the number 60-ish game out of 1,000. Uh, so it has a pretty good shot, but it, I haven't really been marketing it heavily yet, so... Um, anyway, it's there if, if you want to vote for it there, and uh, if you're interested, I, I definitely would recommend just swinging by the website, giving the demo a try. It's free to play the demo, and you know any comments or feedback are welcome. I usually rely uh, heavily on player feedback, so I uh, look forward to having you play the game. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So if you're interested in playing the demo or purchasing Neo Scavenger, there's a link below to bluebottlegames.com. And it's starting at $10 at the moment. So I hope to hear from you in the future, Daniel, and best of luck with the future. Once again, this is Sly Jesse interviewing Daniel Fedder. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Drivers or a shop. You know, it could be really anything. Internet cafe, and we're going to go the wrong, wrong side of the road here. <laughs> Because we are not going to stop for that sign. And we didn't get a red light fine, which is pretty amazing. We'll go around here. And up. Oh, up. Oh, stop. Stop.